Hey, good morning, Jen. The parking lot here is quickly filling up as search and rescue is working to gather and get up the mountain as quickly as possible. Now we've seen a few gondolas full of skis already going up towards the mountain. There's one passing right now. There's also a dog right behind us. Um, so everyone is just kind of joining right now, getting together this morning. In just a few minutes, it went from pretty empty out here to completely full with a lot of activity as people get ready to continue this search for this person up on the mountain. Now, initially we thought that this person that they're searching for now was the eighth person, but now Silver Mountain is saying that this is the seventh person affected by the avalanche. Four have been rescued, two died, and this seventh person now is the one they're searching for this morning. The mountain is closed again today as they continue this search. The search started yesterday morning after a concerned family member called. And this is all a, a bit confusing for Silver Mountain considering they thought that they had everyone accounted for as of Tuesday night. So this is what the sheriff's office said about how that happened. We were safe to say that we thought we had everybody, but the information came in this morning that we still had one missing person. Now we've learned some more about the actual avalanche itself. So take a look at this map. It happened on the 16 to 1 run on the Wardner Peak side of the mountain. It happened in bounds in one of those runs and that run had just opened that day so that the day before the mountain had gotten a good snowfall. They decided to open that run and Silver Mountain said that they had done avalanche control. So now Idaho Panhandle Avalanche Center is investigating to figure out exactly why the avalanche actually happened. Live here in Kellogg, I'm Nicole Hernandez.